Hey guys, Mr. Wiz here. We are ready once again uh, to continue working on our chasing game project that we started in the last video. So in the last video, we started working on our chasing game by creating a player character, by creating a food item uh, for the player to collect, and then also creating an overlap code which used randomness. So every time we touched the food, we would get a point and it would reappear somewhere on the screen. So we are going to return to that project and add some more features today. Today we're going to be looking at enemies um, and also chasing blocks. So stick around for that. As always, make sure the first thing you need to do is check that top right corner and make sure you are signed in, right? If you don't see your picture up there, then go ahead and sign in. So right now I am signed in and in my project section, I can see the chasing game. Oop, I clicked on the wrong one. <laughs> wrong project. All right. So in the main screen, I can see the chasing game right there that we were working on yesterday. Um, now, as we've talked about before, it's a good idea to manually save your work just in case it doesn't save correctly. So let's say that I was looking at this chasing game or let's say it wasn't here. Let's say it didn't appear or when I go to open it, I see this missing important stuff, right? Remember what we talked about with manually saving your work. If I'm lost information and it didn't auto save correctly, I can go to the import section right here on the right hand side below my picture where it says import. I can choose import file and then I can find the download that I made yesterday with the manual save, right? So if you ever notice that your work does not look like it is up to date, go download your, or I'm sorry, go import the manual save that you should have made and that will have all your work on it. So let's check out my chasing game. Looks like it has the stuff in there from yesterday. I've got the player, I've got the cherries, I've got the randomness in it. And so when I play my I have a simple countdown, so I have a few seconds to collect as many points as I can. Not a bad setup, a pretty simple game. What we're going to do today is we're going to make it a little bit more engaging by adding enemy characters that are going to chase us as we are going after the food items, okay? So to do this, I first need to create my enemy. So I'm going to go into sprites. Set my sprite. Now it doesn't really matter what I decide to make my enemy. Um, just to keep things simple, I'm gonna go with this ghost character here because he already looks like a villain. So I'm gonna go with the ghost and I'm going to rename it. So rename the variable and you can call your enemy whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call mine ghost. Now here's the important thing where it says of kind. We don't wanna leave that set as player because we only have one player in this game the player, right? So we're going to change this to enemy type. So now we have three kinds of sprites on the screen, a player kind, an enemy kind, and a food kind. That is important for our overlap codes because our overlap codes are gonna decide what happens when two different sprites touch. And we need to set that for different types of sprites touching. So player, enemy, food. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So I'm not using that right now. That's the overlap code from yesterday. So what I want to do now is I have my enemy. He appears in the middle of the screen. That's great. I want him to chase after the player. So I'm going to go to sprites and I'm going to go down here to where it says set follow. So this is allows two sprites where one follows the other. So I'm going to grab this block. And as far as where I put it in my code, it doesn't really matter as long as I'm putting it after the two sprites were created, right? So I have my player sprite, I have my enemy sprite. Anywhere after these, I can put this block. If I put it before them, I'm gonna end up with some problems. Well, first off, I need to fix the names, right? So ghost follows pack. Those are my sprites, but it's not going to work if I put it up there because ghost and pack haven't been created yet. Remember what we talked about in past videos, order of your code is important. The computer won't be able to follow a command if it doesn't know what you're talking about, right? So the very first line the computer reads is set ghost to follow pack. The computer's gonna go, what, who is ghost? Who is back? I've never heard of these names before, right? So it has to appear after those two sprites were created. It doesn't matter where after, just as long as it's after. So I could put it up higher. I could put it down at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. All right, so ghost is going to follow pack. Now, as you notice, that was very, very fast. The plus sign here allows me to adjust the speed. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, the movement controls for the player where it says move pack with buttons, the plus sign there also allows you to adjust speed. So with the follow code, I only have one number for the speed for the player's controls. I have two because one has to do with the X direction, which is left and right. 
and the other has to do with the Y direction, which is up and down. I usually don't mess with these unless I want to speed up or slow down the player for some reason. But for the follow code, we definitely need to slow down the ghost because he's way too fast. Um, let's just start with 50. If we don't like it, we can change it later, right? So now let's check out our game. So the ghost does follow me and he moves slower than I do because we don't want it to be too challenging, right? I could probably speed him up a little bit to make the game a little bit harder, but that's not too bad. All right, so now the question becomes, what should happen if the ghost touches me? Because right now, if the ghost touches me, nothing happens. I haven't coded it to, so as soon as the ghost touches me, it, 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 nothing. there's no consequence, right? There should be a consequence for when the ghost touches me. So I'm going to go grab another overlap code from the sprite section. And we're going to say, when the enemy overlaps with the player... What should happen? So I'm thinking for my game, it would make sense if every time the enemy touched me, I lost life. So change life by negative one. All right, now I haven't set up lives for the player yet. If I just use this, there is a default setting where the computer will assume I have starting off with three lives, but I can change that, right? So in my on start, I can decide how many lives I want to start with. Do I want to start with three? Do I want to start with five? What do I want to do for my game? We'll go ahead and start it with three. All right, so let's test it out. There's the ghost. He's chasing me. I have three hearts in the top corner to represent the three lives. And the ghost touches me. It's immediately game over. Why do you guys suppose that happened? Why did the game immediately end? I was only supposed to lose one life. So why did the game immediately end? I'll give you a hint. This is very similar to how we got the infinite points in the last video. We have in our code, when the enemy overlaps the player, to change life by negative one. Well, guess what? When the enemy overlaps the player, he's still touching the player. So just like when the player touched the cherry and it got infinite points, when the ghost is touching the enemy, it's not just losing one life, it's losing infinite lives because it just keeps on, it's still touching. So in order to make it only lose one life, we need them to no longer be touching. <clears throat> so how do we do that? Well, the easy way would be just like we did before, we just changed the enemy's position. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this block actually. And I'm going to put it in here, but instead of having a cherry move position, we will have, so we could have the player move or we could have the ghost move. I'm gonna have the ghost move because I feel like it's easier for the player to play if their character isn't moving all over the screen, right? So now let's test it out. Oh, you see how Every time he touches me, I lose one life, and then he respawns somewhere else in the screen. That's not bad. Now, of course, to make the game a little bit more engaging, I should probably have a sound effect. So let's just duplicate the sound here and go with a nice negative sound. Maybe this want want sound. Let's see what this sounds like. Kind of a long sound. Maybe something less... Ooh, what's power down sound like? Oh yeah, that's a good sound effect for when you lose a life. So I'm getting a power up every time I hit the cherry. And every time I get a negative. Oh, and I ran out of time. Okay, so we've got a nice little setup here with the player chasing after the food items. The ghost is chasing after the player. There's a negative that happens. When he touches the ghost, he loses his life. Um, we also still have the countdown. Now, of course, the question might come up at this point in time. I'm wondering, do we even still need the countdown? Like, I kind of have two. Uh, I kind of have two challenges now: stay alive and get as many as in a certain amount of time. I might not want both of those, so I might decide for my game to get rid of the countdown, or I could have alternate endings depending on what happens. So maybe. 
on countdown ends, I could do a game win. But when life gets to zero, on life zero, sorry. I'm going to mute my game there so it's not blasting while I'm talking. So I could decide to get rid of the countdown, or I could decide to keep the countdown and have different endings depending on what happens here. So if I run out of lives, then it's a game over. But if I survive until the end of the countdown, then it's a game win. So game win versus game lose. And don't forget about the things I talked about in one of my past videos where I talked about ways to change the ending. You can change the message and all that here as well. You can change the special effect. So this is not a bad setup. I'm gonna give myself more time because 10 seconds is really not enough. Let's go with 30 seconds. And I'm also gonna make my ghost a little bit faster. Let's go with 70 and let's play my game. I'm gonna turn the sound back on. Start game here. Still might be a little bit too easy for me. I feel like I'm much faster than the ghost. But it's not a bad setup. So I'll let you guys play around with this a little bit. Decide what you want to do with it. Maybe you want to change the thumbnail. now. Maybe you'd like to change the countdown. Maybe you want to delete the countdown. Maybe you want to change the speed of your ghost to be faster than 70, maybe 80 or 90. I wouldn't make it the same speed as the player or else it's going to be too hard probably, right? You want the player to be able to outrun the ghost. But yeah, this is actually a pretty decent, a pretty decent little game. So for here, the only thing left to do is just to give it a good title, right? So I'm going to grab a splash block. And what do I want to call this game? Cherry Chaser by Mr. Wiz. And then I can give some instructions on how to play. Collect the cherries. Don't touch the ghost. All right, what does that look like? Yeah, that's not bad. Keep in mind, when you're doing splash blocks, you want to keep the instructions short, right? If you're going to go with the longer instructions and splash block, you really need to use the long text. It's going to look a lot nicer. Okay, so I pretty much have a finished game for now. I could always improve it more. You can always add more stuff to your games, right? So I could always change the sprites to make them better. I could add music, maybe. I could customize my sound effects a bit more. There's always more you can do. But for now, I think this is a good stopping point. I will make a part three where we'll talk about ways that you can improve this game even more by adding maybe additional enemies or even additional power-ups. And I'll show you guys how all that works in part three. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new today. If you learned something new, please click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about this channel so we can all learn how to build fun video games and share them with each other. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.